Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. There are plenty of problems with coverage of Israeli attacks on Gaza, starting with the framing of Israeli air raids and drone strikes as retaliation, which would suggest the people on the other end started the problem. We've also seen media provide a peculiar type of balance. In reality, Palestinians have so far suffered 100 percent of the deaths and most of the injuries. But media often go out of their way to stress how both sides are being hurt. Perhaps it was that tendency that led ABC anchor Diane Sawyer to say this on July 9th. We take you overseas now to the rockets raining down on Israel today as Israel tried to shoot them out of the sky. All part of the tinderbox, Israelis and Palestinians, and here an Israeli family trying to salvage what they can. One woman standing speechless among the ruins. The problem is those families are actually Palestinian. And anyone who's followed the current violence would know there is no destruction in Israel resembling those pictures. Many media watchers caught the error, and ABC eventually apologized. During an introduction to a story on the conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians, I misidentified these powerful images. The people in these photos are Palestinians in Gaza in the aftermath of an airstrike by Israel, not Israelis as I mistakenly described them. And we want you to know we are truly sorry for the error. A simple mistake then? Well, given that ABC is part of a corporate media that prioritizes some lives over others, it's easy to see how mistakes like this can happen. Elsewhere at ABC, the Sunday show this week decided to give viewers a peek at a new film by far-right provocateur Dinesh D'Souza, who anchor Martha Raddatz described as the man some call the Michael Moore of the right. Well, not exactly. D'Souza's been in the spotlight for decades from editing a crudely racist, homophobic newsletter in college to blaming liberal sexual mores for Abu Ghraib to blaming the cultural left for the September 11th attacks. A few weeks ago, he was convicted of felony campaign finance fraud. But there he is on ABC promoting his new movie, some sort of pushback against critics of American foreign policy. This follows on his earlier film, which presented a conspiracy theory about Barack Obama's secret radical anti-colonial agenda. It's the kind of stuff one wouldn't expect a serious news outlet to entertain. But ABC, like other elite outlets, always seems to have a place reserved for discredited right-wing pundits. Finally, the billionaire CEO cutting thousands of jobs. That's not the sort of person you'd see a puff piece on in the liberal media, right? Well, wrong. The June 26th CBS Evening News presented Hewlett Packard CEO Meg Whitman. Viewers learn that Whitman has some big ideas, like changing the offices at company headquarters so that there would be more cubicles. The segment was heavy on promoting some new HP product, but the real innovation seems to be here. Whitman has announced up to 50,000 job cuts, about 14 percent of the company's workforce when she took over. CBS talks about this as a difficult transition, but it wasn't for everyone. Left unmentioned by CBS, Whitman, already a billionaire, pulled down a $17 million compensation package last year. The segment closes with this. We have to keep moving. The CEO who built eBay knows Silicon Valley only rewards those who roll the dice. Anthony Mason, CBS News, Palo Alto. And what about the thousands of people Whitman has laid off? Well, there's no fawning nightly newscast about them. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching Fair TV.